Appreciate all of you waking up with us. We are breaking down everything in the world of sports. Major League Baseball playoffs underway. Dodgers and Braves took control of their series with Game 1 wins uh, yesterday afternoon and last night. Also, we continue with the ALDS uh, with the Yankees tying up their series with the Rays and the hated Houston Astros going up 2-0 in their series. They are now one win away from advancing into uh, the ALCS, the Astros, Major League Baseball. It'd be amazing if they won the American League and advanced back to the World Series and actually had to play in front of fans after uh, all of the expectation that they were going to be much condemned this season. And then no fans ended up playing. It's only a 60-game season. And the Astros basically avoided all fan negativity that might have otherwise ensued. And uh, as a result, we'll see what ends up transpiring there. Uh, I ranked, by the way, uh, the the uh, the finals. We have a situation where the Lakers have taken a 3-1 series lead and 70% of the NBA finals audience from the last time LeBron James played has completely vanished. They are down around... Five, four million, whatever the heck it is, tiny numbers of viewers, the likes of which the NBA has never seen before. It's prompted Adam Silver to come out and say, hey, we're going to take names off the jerseys, social justice names off the jerseys, that is. Uh, We're going to take the Black Lives Matter off the basketball court. Maybe players will even stand for the national anthem. You know it's bad when Adam Silver is backpedaling and trying to throw up his hands and say, oh, no, 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 we're not going to continue to do this next year. Uh, And by the way, I ranked, uh, as I typically do, top five, bottom five in the NFL. We'll get to that a little bit later in today's program. I talked about it on my uh, OutKick uh, Facebook and Periscope and YouTube show. By the way, have you guys seen the new studio that I have in my house now for the afternoon videos? It looks like a really legit news organization that we're running now at OutKick. I can't believe how like I'll just occasionally look at the screenshots now. Used to just be a banner behind me with OutKick on it. Now it looks like I've got a real studio. Have you guys seen yeah. that? Yeah, the lighting makes you look like two years younger. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's important. When you're 41, two years younger knocks me back into the 30s. That's, uh, that's a big uh, big addition. Uh, 877-996-6369. I'm asking the question, are you watching less of the NBA? Because two years ago, there were, you know, 15, 16 million people watching the NBA Finals with LeBron James playing against the Golden State Warriors. This year, it is a tiny fraction of that. 70% of the audience has vanished, and a lot of people want to weigh in, including uh, another member of the Outkick VIP. Who's up first, Danny G? Paul in Texas. Paul in Texas. You watching less? I am watching less. No, I'm watching less. I'm not gambling on the NBA this year. Oh, no. It, it just, You're not even willing oh, to gamble yeah. on it. I've got three offshore accounts, and I go to Vegas three times a year. And I can't gamble on something where I feel like all of them feel like I'm a bitch-ass white boy. Yeah. And it, it just seeps into me. And so you're not only not watching, you are gambling less. Because a lot of people would say, you know, gamblers are the people who – you know, I had a conversation with Whitlock about this. And he was like, you know what? I think sports gambling is going to become more popular because sports gambling is going to be the last industry in sports where they don't lecture you. You know, whatever side you're on in sports gambling, they don't care anything else about you other than take a side and place a wager. And he was like, you know what? I think it's going to be like the last thing that doesn't divide us because regardless of your white, black, Asian, Hispanic, gay, straight, whatever else identity you have – if you're like last night, if you were on the Lakers to cover, you don't care about anything other than the Lakers covering. If you were on the Heat to cover, you don't care about anything else. And he's like, and well, that kind of unites people. Picks had the Heat. I was glad to see that. Thanks, Terry. We love you. <laughs> Thank you for being a VIP. Uh, Heat, again, if you were gambling on that game last night, Tyler Hero drained a three at the buzzer that was a massive, massive made basket for a lot of people that he covered. A lot of people, you know, gamblers don't even care who wins the game. They care who covers. But that's interesting if it even is hurting the overall gambling on the sport because people are so turned off by the NBA's politics that they're like, screw it, I'm not even going to gamble on this game. Dub, who's up next on your end? We got Mello in Ohio. Mello, what you got for me? Solid performance by Mello in Ohio. 
I don't think it's our phones. Our phones, I don't want to jinx the phones, but the phones have been pretty flawless for the past several months. Uh, who's up next, Dub? All right, let's go to Charlie in Dayton. Charlie in Dayton, what you got for me? Hey, Clay, first of all, I gave up on LeBron when he went to L.A., man. I, that that kind of just ruined it for me. I'm tired of that crap, you know. So, um, But it, it seems like they it, it always seems like they kind of make it into a racial thing, you know, obviously with the Black Lives Matter and stuff. But if you think about it, nobody wants politics and basketball. And the easiest way to point that out is you're saying – there's only like 3 million, 5 million people watching, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so even if every single one of those people were black, that means that 90% of black people are not watching the NBA. So you cut that in half, 95% of all black people are not watching the NBA and don't care and don't want politics and basketball either. So yeah. I, I think they've just failed all across the board. Thanks for the call. Look, I think what has happened is, and this is a big picture story, we have created a series of media silos. The internet did it, cable did it, where they can slice and dice you up. I'll give you an example. If you are a married woman, your favorite television show is, favorite television network is probably Lifetime or Bravo right? Married women. If I wanted to reach married women to advertise to, I bet the highest possible audience of married women in America is the lifetime in Bravo. 100%. Would you guys agree? Would you agree? Uh, you got Yes. A and TLC. Bravo. Yep. Yeah, and what's the other? Oh, TLC. I, I, that's right. TLC, TLC, where we were talking about yeah, the 90 Day, 90 Day Fiance show. 90 Day Fiance. Okay. It's on TLC. I didn't even know what station that was on. All right. So, but the point is, like, you could not reach if, – if you told me right now, Clay Travis, I've got a million dollars to advertise a product, and you have to find married women to advertise that product to, I feel like I couldn't lose by advertising during 90 Day Fiance. I feel like I could not lose by advertising any on any of the Housewives shows, right? Whether it's Beverly Hills, whether it's Orange County, whether it's uh, Atlanta, whatever it is, New Jersey – all the Real Housewives shows, as well as the Watch What Live, Watch What Happened Live specials, huge women audiences, right? And all those Lifetime holiday movies, where you're like, man, who watches all these cheesy Christmas movies that I think they're about to start up again on Lifetime? You know, it's like every they have all these brand new original. It's went married women, right? You told me that I wanted to reach married women. I would go there and I would advertise, right? So, cable has so niched our audience that I can say like, hey, I want to reach married women. I just need to buy those three television shows and I'm going to get them. In the past, historically, like back in the 70s and 80s, you'd have been like, oh, I'm going to buy, you know, let's say during the day, I'm going to buy soap operas because mom is home with the kids. It's nap time. Soap operas are on. And otherwise... You had to buy, let's say, the Cosby Show or Family Ties or whatever it is. The whole family's watching, right? So the big point here is cable has allowed a level of nichedom to exist that didn't exist before. And then what has happened on top of cable is the internet has made niches even smaller, right? Because let's say there's 200 cable channels where, well, there's 200,000 websites. So whatever you are into, you can find it on the internet in spades. And if you spend too much time in a niche, you convince yourself of things that aren't true. What analogy am I drawing here? Look at the NBA bubble. The NBA bubble is a perfect metaphor for the bubble universe that many people find themselves in time after time after time. So the NBA bubble, you've got a bunch of people that were already in a niche, right? Like basketball fans are a niche of sports fans. What usually happens is casual fans come in for the NBA finals that would never watch regular season NBA because they want to know who the champion's going to be. 
and this isn't unique to the NBA. This is like the Super Bowl. One of my favorite things about the Super Bowl is 50 million people tops watch the NFC Championship game and the AFC Championship game to see who's going to be in the Super Bowl. Almost everyone out there listening to me right now, you're a sports fan. You watch the NFC Championship game and you watch the AFC Championship game. And then 50 million more people suddenly show up and watch the Super Bowl. And if you're a big football fan, you know what I'm talking about. There are Super Bowl parties and you look around and you hear the dumbest comments ever from people who usually don't watch football and then show up. And they're the kind of people that will talk during the game and then as soon as the commercials start, they tell everybody to shut up because they want to hear the commercials. And you're like, wait a minute. I watch football all year all year round. I want to hear what's going on during the Super Bowl because I watch opening Thursday night NFL action because I watch Monday night because I watch Thursday night because I watch football all year round. And then suddenly people show up who tell me to be quiet during the commercials and talk all during the game. That's what Super Bowl parties are like for real football fans. You are in a football bubble. But football is a much bigger bubble than the NBA bubble. What happened is the NBA already had a niche audience. And then they went down to Orlando and they all got together and they said, hey, how do we make our bubble even smaller? And the answer is by leaning in to the tiny segment of diehard NBA fans and doing what the woke community in the NBA is active on social media telling you that they want. And in the process, you turned and faced and high-fived a tiny minority of your usual audience and you turned your back on everyone else. Instead of trying to have a big tent, a big bubble, and draw in as many people as possible to consume your product, the NBA turned to the tiny woke minority of their fan base and said, hey, what do you guys think we should do? And they're like, you should put social justice warrior messages on your jerseys. Brilliant. I love it. High five. What do you think we should do? You should write Black Lives Matter on the court. Brilliant. I love it. High five. What should we do during the national anthem? You should kneel. Nobody should stand. Brilliant. High five. They high five the woke community that is a tiny minority of their overall fans made them happy and turned their back on the huge majority of basketball fans that otherwise would have been consuming their product. And that is an example of getting lost in your own bubble and losing sight of the real world. That's a real issue that I believe exists for many people out there in America today. We try to talk to the largest audience possible. I'm talking to all those people that the NBA turned their back on. That's why our audience is up 360% in the last year. I think that the reason why I'm more cognizant of what the real sports fan wants is partly because I'm not lost in that LA bubble. Because I'm not lost in that New York City bubble. I talk to the general population, the huge masses of Americans every single day. And what those people tell me all the time is, I don't expect to agree with every athlete on every issue. They have the right to their opinion, just like I have the right to my opinion. But don't lecture me. Don't tell me that you find my opinions to be unacceptable. Don't turn your back to me because that leaves me with no other choice than turning my back to you. And that's what the NBA doesn't get. And I think that's why this bubble in Orlando is such an interesting concept. They already had a small niche of basketball fans. And then they turned their back on all of the basketball fans in America and just decided to make social justice warriors happy. And what I would say to you is this. If as a business, you make a decision that doesn't add any audience to your business, doesn't add any new customers, That is an awful decision to make. Nobody who was out there was not watching the NBA because they stood for the national anthem. Nobody out there was not watching the NBA 
because they didn't have social justice warrior messages on their jerseys. Nobody out there was not watching the NBA because they didn't have Black Lives Matter on the basketball court. By making all of those decisions, they directly alienated some viewers, a substantial portion it seems, and they didn't add a single person. The people who are super woke are still watching the NBA because they're the diehards if they still exist. The NBA didn't add anybody who was like, you know what? I was refusing to watch the NBA because all the players stood for the national anthem. But then they kneeled, and now I'm watching every minute. Those people aren't sports fans. Those people that the NBA is trying to make happy on social media, those people don't watch sports. Same thing with the NFL. You ever watch a Colin Kaepernick rally? The people walking around at Colin Kaepernick rallies are not sitting down in front of their television and watching the NFL all day on Sunday. They're using Kaepernick as a political prop, but they're not actually NFL fans. You got to be careful of trying to make people happy who don't like you already. Some people are like, oh, Clay Trevor, I go on Twitter and a lot of people say mean things about you. I'm like, all right, those people probably don't like me. Why would I try to make them happy? One of the best bits of advice I ever got, and I think it applies across the line for everybody out there listening right now, is if you worry about the people who don't like you, then the people who do like you won't like you anymore. People who don't like me, I don't care. Like, I'm not walking around like, oh, why don't you like me? What can I do to make you like me more? What do you want me to say? Just tell me. I'll say it. Please like me. No, I don't care. If you don't like me, that's fine. I legit, maybe that's my, that's my superpower. That's what my wife says. Clay, your superpower is you don't care about people who don't like you. It's true. I really legitimately don't care. Why would I? My life's busy. If you decide you don't like me, that's fine. Go find somebody else you like. I'm not going to try to make people who don't like me, like me. That's what social media does though. Why'd that person dislike my Instagram post? Why is that person not like me on, why didn't they like my, my birthday happen? How come I didn't get a, how come they didn't like my birthday post? I just posted a picture of my six-month-old. Why didn't Aunt Ruth say something about my six-month-old? People are obsessed with trying to make people who don't like them on social media like them. The NBA did that. And as a result, the people who do like them don't like them anymore. Who's up next, Dub? We got AC in LA. AC, what you got for me? Hey, Travis. Good talk, good talk. I don't have a problem with it. I'm a Laker fan, and I'm watching just as much. I don't see how people would get slightly or overly offended at all by having Black Lives Matter on a court or anywhere else. People change the narrative of the Black Lives Matter movement. and What did people change about the narrative? Of, like, Black Lives Matter the changed their own the narrative. narrative. They said, we don't believe in, like, two-parent households. And then people were like, wait a minute. That's kind of a ridiculous concept. And so Black Lives Matter has changed their narrative. Uh, the narrative that uh, black li- a black life would matter more than another life. That, when it's just the disparaging... Uh, history that they feel like they might have to put a little more something on it. It's not anyone's not any any better than anyone else. Yeah, thanks for the call. Black Lives Matter has been a disaster. Black Lives Matter has directly, regardless of what your political beliefs are, Black Lives Matter, every place that Black Lives Matter has been the most active has led to more black deaths. Period. You go look at the data Every place that has had the most active Black Lives Matter protest movement, the result has been hundreds if not thousands of more black deaths because they demonize police. A tiny minority of people out there actually believe in defunding the police. Police are not able to do their jobs and overwhelmingly shootings and murders skyrocketed in every community that had the most active Black Lives Matter protest. So the most ironic thing of the Black Lives Matter movement is 
the more active it has been in black communities, the more black lives are lost. Period. That's a statistical fact. And it is, I believe, the most ineffective and deadly protest that has ever existed in the history of the United States. And for whatever reason, people in my business and people in the media business in general are afraid of saying that because they're like, oh my God, if you say that, that's racist. No, look at the actual facts. One of the real problems that exist in this country is when you share facts that make people uncomfortable, social media era, they don't respond by debating or discussing what those facts say. They say, oh, you're racist. Oh, you're sexist. Oh, you're homophobic. The attack is not discussing the actual facts. It's an attack on the person, right? And that's why white guys like me, most of them in the world of sports, they won't even say anything. They're afraid that they will be a target and that the mob will come after them. Well, I, I don't worry about that. I got my own business. It's thriving. Mob comes after me, bring it. I love it. I like being in the mud. I'll argue with you. I'll actually point out facts, and that's why this show is dominating. Because there's a huge craving. White, black, Asian, Hispanic. So many people lie to you all day long in this country because they want to use you to advocate for things they care about. I'm a lawyer. Look, I look at the facts, and then I make arguments based on the facts. And we get the facts right on this show. And so there are a lot of people out there who know this, right? But feel like the media is lying to them. If you are out there and you are not looking at the data, you might miss the fact that murders and shootings have skyrocketed in the wake of Black Lives Matter protests. I believe that people are using the Black Lives Matter movement as a shield to be as political as they possibly can be but not recognizing that they're actually making things worse for the average person living in the inner city. That's why the average person in the inner city wants more cops, not less cops. They don't want to defund the police. They want to be able to call the police and actually get help. The NBA walked out over this Jacob Blake dude. The reason why the police were there was because a black woman called police because Jacob Blake, she said, sexually assaulted her and she was afraid when he came to her house. Guy got tased a couple of times, refused to comply with police. I wish the NBA, if they want to make political statements, they'd make a statement and they would say something that's not political. It's listen to police. The number of people getting shot by police would go to almost zero if nobody resisted arrest. I'm a lawyer. Sometimes people get arrested and they don't deserve to get arrested. I tell my kids. People talk about, oh, do you have to talk with your kids? Yeah, I have to talk with my kids. I tell them to shut up and listen to police. You want to avoid a bad result interacting with the police officer, shut your mouth and do what they say. If you get arrested and it's illegal, I'm a lawyer, tell my kids this. We'll fight it in a court of law. But you know what's hard to do? Fight after you do something and get shot. This is almost a zero police shooting rate if you shut your mouth and and listen to police. I'm not saying police are infallible. Some of them are bad. But if you just shut your mouth and listen to them, then you can get your day in court and prove that you were mistreated. If you get shot and you die, you never get to tell your story. Shut up. Comply. Don't resist arrest. The number of shootings that would exist in this country would go to almost zero, and police wouldn't be terrified. NBA, Black Lives Matter, this whole thing has made things more dangerous for police and for the people that police are interacting with. It's crazy. Uh, When we come back, we'll talk about the Major League Baseball season being underway. We'll talk with John Morosi, our Major League Baseball insider. Go sign up for the Outkick VIP. If you love this show and you're recognizing, man, they have conversations on this show unlike that exist anywhere else, you need to be supporting Outkick VIP because we'll go hire more writers. We'll continue to grow. We'll get bigger and better. Go to outkick.com, sign up for the VIP right now. First Amendment's still alive and well on this show, even if in most of sports media and most of the country it isn't.